Welcome to Tag Talk. I'm your host, Nadira Nazia. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Natalia Kosendova. She's a member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Center. Having been elected in 2018, she brings years of experience working as a frontline registered nurse in Ontario hospitals, as well as a degree in human and molecular biology from the University of Toronto. Originally born in Slovakia with Polish roots, Natalia immigrated to Mississauga as a child, speaking five languages, including French. She's a passionate advocate for equitable access to healthcare, mental health, women, and youth in politics, and is actively engaged with the Polish community in Ontario and abroad. Natalia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I have to say you are my first guest for this year. I'm really, really happy to, to see you and to talk to you about how did you get all get involved in politics? What made you decide to run for politics being a nurse? Well, you hit it right on the spot. Uh, healthcare uh, is my passion. And like you mentioned, equitable access to healthcare is something that I want to dedicate my life to, to working towards. And uh, I became a nurse uh, several years ago. And very quickly, I realized that uh, our system, our current healthcare system, is fragmented and a lot of inequalities exist. Uh, uh, and so that was one of the main uh, reasons why I got involved in politics, because under the previous liberal government, uh, we saw a lot of healthcare spending going into bureaucracy and not enough into the front lines. And, and so that's frankly the main reason why I got involved. So it's really great to see w more women in politics as well, too. And what was your kind of th train of thoughts as you enter into politics? What is the main thing that you really want to change as a woman, also mm -hmm. part of healthcare? So, uh, you know, being a woman in politics comes with its own challenges, but we live in Canada in one of the best countries in the world. And Canada truly affords opportunities for people like me, someone who wasn't born in this country, but who immigrated to this country and has worked extremely hard since day one, you know, to, to give back to Canada for all those opportunities. So I was able to go to university and, and I have two Bachelor of Science degrees. And, and with that knowledge and with the, you know, uh, with that, uh, I guess, uh, passion, uh, I decided, you know, instead of complaining about what's not what's not going well in our province, to actually get get involved and do something to change it. And I think women's voices are extremely important in politics. You know, we think a little bit differently than men, and so having that perspective is extremely important and valuable. We see the, uh, you know, more uh, more females take up leadership roles in politics and in, in companies, but we still have a lot of work to do to make sure that uh, women voices are heard and that they're equally represented. Right now in our PC caucus, um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have 23 other MPP colleagues for a total of 24. So that's 24 out of 74, you know, it's about 30%. So there's still some work to do because, you know, there's about 55% of women in Ontario as in uh, the general population. So, you know, I think uh, women, when they decide to enter politics, they really have to ask themselves some tough questions, uh, especially for, for young women of, you know, childbearing age. Um, you know, it's important to maintain that work-life balance but it shouldn't uh, prevent us uh, from actually seeking public office. And so, um, so that's why I decided to try it, see what happens. And, and I was fortunate enough and I worked hard to, to get elected and together with our wonderful team under the leadership of Premier Doug Ford to make important changes in Ontario. So how's been your experience so far? Well, it's been a whirlwind. I have to say that for sure. I mean, uh, nobody bo is born an MPP. And uh, one thing is to uh, volunteer for a political party uh, or even work as a staffer. It's a whole different ball game to actually put your name on a ballot, seek public office and then get elected. Because now, you know, your name is out there and all the decisions that are made by our government, uh, we have to stand firmly behind. So, uh, you know, it comes with its challenges. It's definitely a learning process, uh, you know, getting briefings from all the ministries to, uh, you know, doing our homework on what the previous government has done, looking at numbers, looking at budgets. Not all of us are economists, so it definitely takes um, a lot of a lot of learning. So I think I speak for myself and my colleagues to say that it's been it's been wonderful. It's been a huge learning curve. But I'm just so proud of the work that we have accomplished so far. It's been about six months and, uh, you know, we've passed many bills. We've uh, we've brought Ontario back on track on certain issues. And, and I'm just uh, so excited to see what 2019 has in store for us. I, I, it's great to see your passion about this. And I know there's not a lot of women that are involved today in politics because of various different reasons, <coughs> right? A lot of people that not think that their vote makes a difference. For our viewers out there, and that's your camera, what is your message for these women to get them engaged? 
So I think for women, you know, we always talk about the glass ceiling. And there was a lot of talk about the glass ceiling uh, in the U.S. election uh, last year when we had Hillary uh, running against Donald. Uh, I think the glass ceiling is a true thing. It does exist. But I think as, you know, we live in a modern society, I think it's really up to us women to break those barriers. So, uh, you know, we need to have more women seeking public office and, and not being afraid to step up to the plate and actually go for it, right? And so, uh, you know, that's the only way we can implement change is by being strong, by making the tough decisions uh, and, uh, and seeking public office. And that way we can change uh, governmental policies from within. Because a lot of women are mothers, right? They are the one uh, raising the child, having a career, and they say, oh, I'm not sure if, if my vote is going to make a difference or if I can make a difference. And I think people like yourself are inspirations for these women to say, yes, you can make a difference. You have to, it is a lot of hard work. As you can say, it is a teamwork. But at the end of the day, they need to just get engaged. And what will be the first step that they can take? So few things in that in that question. So we actually have an MPP in our caucus currently, Christina Midas, who is an expecting mother. She her baby will be born sometimes in January, so we're really looking forward to that. And uh, I think that's great. It goes to show that you know women, even if they are pregnant, they can still seek public office and still manage to balance the um, I guess the responsibilities that come with both being a mother and being an elected official. And so I, I would say to women, you know, don't let that aspect of womanhood, I guess, um, prevent you from seeking public office. But, um, you know, I looked at some statistics and some, some dates. Um, so it was, I believe, uh, 1917 when women in Canada uh, fought for the right to vote and for the right to be uh, elected as officials. So it wasn't that long ago. A hundred years, you know, is not such a long time. And it took all those women, those brave women, to really uh, stand together and to fight for those rights. And because of them and thanks to them, we are able to today run for office. And we know that this is not true in all countries in the world. And there are, uh, you know, certain countries in, in which uh, women's rights are not respected. And so, um, so I think, you know, living in Canada gives us such a great opportunity to really, um, you know, have women's voices heard. And uh, so first step, well, for me, the first step was being involved in a political party. I guess it takes uh, it takes uh, a little bit of homework. You have to really look at yourself, look at your values, look which par at the parties and what uh, their philosophies are and you know, where your views align and uh, where you see yourself, uh, your values most reflected with. And, and then start volunteering. There, you know, volunteering is a wonderful opportunity to learn, learn more about yourself, lear learn about the community, learn about the political process. And that's really step number one, is getting more involved. And I want to let our viewer know one thing that I really admire about Natalia is that you are a nurse and you're still working at a nurse. You, how many shifts do you do a month? So it varies. Uh, it depends how busy we are in Parliament. Um, but I actually worked two shifts uh, yesterday and the day before. Um, you know, this is what I say to people. Um, being a nurse keeps me really grounded because sometimes when, you know, we sit in Parliament, um, sometimes we may lose touch with with the ground and with the reality because it just comes with the job. We're sitting there every day and, and you know, that's just how it sometimes may be. But being out there with real people, with patients who are suffering, with families trying to access health care, you know, with patients who are nearing end of life, um, it really keeps me grounded. It, it reminds me why I got involved in the public surf, uh, service in the first place. And it gives me that motivation and that drive to work even harder as an MPP. And you know, some people on Twitter criticize me, oh, how come you're still working? You should be working for the people of your community. Well, I'll, I tell you this, I am 100% working for the people of my community, whether it's at the bedside or whether it's advocating for issues as an MPP. And you know, it's quite normal for elected officials to still um, do a little bit of work to maintain their professional licenses and you know I've been cleared by the integrity commissioner of Ontario to do this work but above all it, it really it really gives me you know a satisfaction to be there in the hospital and to see you know that work that still needs to be done to make sure that our healthcare system is transformed uh, you know I always say to people I think Christine Elliott our minister of health uh, is doing a wonderful job, but she, I think, has the toughest job in this province. I would say maybe even tougher than our premier because 
Healthcare is our number one issue. This is the number one way that our constituents, the people of Ontario, interact with our Ontario government. It is the largest spending item in our budget. We spend billions and billions of dollars. Well, we need to make sure that the, those monies are spent right and that the money is going to frontline care. And, you know, 15 years of the Liberal rule has made a tremendous mess of our healthcare system, education, you know, finances for Christ's sake, but for many things. And so it's going to take time. Things will not change overnight. It's been six months and we've done a few uh, steps into the right direction, but I frankly don't envy Christine Elliott because she has the toughest job. And, you know, I'm there every step of the way to support her, whether it comes uh, to nursing or healthcare issues or in any other capacity. But there is a lot of work to be done, and I certainly look forward to our government, you know, transforming the way healthcare is delivered in Ontario. I really like the way that you stay connected with the people, especially mental health and health in general is something that you're very passionate about. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back. So next up, we're going to talk a little bit about Natalia. Who's Natalia? Mm -hmm. And get to know her likes and dislikes. Losing weight and feeling fit is a simple three-point process. Diet, exercise, and a weight reduction supplement. VeggieSlim by Greenish is a Health Canada approved weight management formula that's effective, safe, vegetarian, and natural to use. Combined with the right diet and exercise plan, VeggieSlim will bring you back onto the path of healthy living. Welcome back, everybody. We are here today with Natalia Kusandova, MPP for Mississauga Centre. Natalia, I want the people of Mississauga Centre to really get to know who is Natalia, right? So we talk about your political aspirations, what you're doing, the nursing piece. I want to ask you some fun questions now. Sure. First, I want to know, what is your favourite colour? Well, my favorite color is blue, but my second favorite color is green, to the point that today I actually wore my favorite green dress. But I, I forgot that when you go into a studio, you're not supposed to wear green. So for all of you at home watching... Yeah, let's get the camera on her. <laughs> look what happens when you wear green to a studio. Ta-da! You now become the background. That's what go. happens. <laughs> so for political rookies out there, uh, Make sure you don't wear green on your interview day because you will just blend with your back, uh, backdrop. <laughs> uh, so that's a good learning. Absolutely. <laughs> so what is your favorite vacation spot? You know what? I don't really have a favorite vacation spot. Uh, you know, my, my grandmother, she lives in Poland and uh, I have a very strong relationship with her uh, and I've never actually lived in Poland but I've every single vacation every single holiday I, I, I go to Poland to visit my grandmother she's now 88 years old so you know she she's aging and so I would say my if I had to pick a favorite vacation spot it, it would definitely be Poland uh, you know in my grandmother's village so do you prefer beaches or mountains I love beaches I went to Florida for a few days to recharge my batteries so I, I love uh, I love beaches, but I also do like, uh, you know, hiking. I love nature, so I like mountains as well. So uh, what's your favorite sports? Do you do any sport or watch any sports? So I, I'm a big fan of dancing. I used to coach a salsa team when I was in university. Uh, even in high school at Philip Pocock uh, Catholic Secondary School, I, I coached a salsa team, so that's my passion. I love Latin music and, and salsa, merengue, you name it. That's what I do for fun. And I actually recently participated in a charity event and um, I performed a bachata duet with my partner, Peter. Uh, so that, that's a lot of fun. In terms of sports, you know, I try to maintain fitness, um, try to go to the gym and things like that. But with, uh, with the schedule these days, uh, trying to balance uh, everything is not always easy. But hopefully 2019 is a good year for, for resolutions. And so I will try to be more physically active. It's important for, for health reasons, and, but also for mental health reasons. I want our viewer to know that Natalia is an amazing dancer. I actually <laughs> witnessed it myself at the event she just mentioned, which is Color of Loves. So if you want to see her, go to Color of Love website. Maybe you'll see what her performance. You are a fabulous dancer. I was so impressed. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much. And uh, my good friend Maggie Habieda, she's actually the organizer of Colors of Love, and and I know she organizes it every year. And it's a concert that brings people from different backgrounds and and different uh, artistic talents together and raises money for mental health uh, for the charity called Hats for Off for Mental Health. And so I think it's important to bring you know uh, awareness to those issues, but also by having some fun and uh, enjoying arts. I know some of your colleagues were there and they were very impressed, very <laughs> impressed with your performance. Did not know you had such great hidden talents. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, I'll share one funny story. Uh, when we were called back uh, recently to the Legislative Assembly on our last day that we were sitting, I believe it was uh, December 20th, uh, or the day before, we got together with some of our colleagues, including uh, Minister Jeff Hurek, and uh, we were just having some, some you know, nice chats, and uh, someone put on some salsa music, and uh, someone said, oh, Natalia, aren't you a, a salsa dancer? So I ended up giving the minister an impromptu salsa lesson uh, together with all my colleagues, and so I think if um, minister's watching, you know, salsa lesson is on, and I think uh, we will do like a little uh, collegial lessons in the future just to have some fun. I think it's important to also uh, build that team spirit among our team. We've been working so hard and we've also been getting to know each other. Uh, you know, 74 of us are, are colleagues in the PC caucus and we work very hard, but I also it's really I think it's really important to get to know each other um, on a personal level so we can work better as a team. Absolutely. And, and hence, that's why I wanted to ask you some personal question because your constituency gets to know you a little bit more. Absolutely. What's your favorite meal? My favorite meal, well, it would have to be pierogies, Polish pierogies. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the ongoing joke with our premier, Doug Ford, is that every time I want him to come to an event, a Polish event, I send him a secret package of pierogies, which is true. There have been several deliveries to premier's office of pierogies, and then, you know, I get, hopefully, sometimes uh, his attendance in my events that way. So, yeah. If you can only have one type of cuisine for the rest of your life, oh what would gosh. it be for the rest of your life? I have to tell you, for me, it's Japanese. I love Japanese cuisine. That's a tough question. You know, I was uh, raised in Mississauga and I experienced all types of wonderful cuisines. I actually worked at Bombay Palace here uh, in Brampton as a waitress for several, several years. And so I, I love Indian cuisine. I, I do love it. Uh, but, you know, Polish cuisine is close to my heart. I also enjoy French and Italian. So. Uh, that's a really tough question. I don't know if I could pick just one. <laughs> uh, it's probably the first time you hear this. I've, mm -hmm. I've gave it a lot of thought, so that's why <laughs> I know Japanese is the way for me to go. Oh, awesome. Well, sushi is amazing. I love yeah. sushi as well. And then you can have tapenyaki and all that. So mm -hmm. the whole or part of the whole Japanese mm -hmm. segment, right? Okay, I see that. I'll give it some thought. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, are you a cook? Do you like cooking? I love cooking. Actually, um, when I had more time in my life uh, previously, I would cook quite a lot. Uh, I think it's important to, to have a healthy diet, you know, and uh, with, you know, obesity rates uh, rising in Mississauga, especially among young people, you know, I, I think it's very important to, to be very conscientious of what we eat. But, you know, with the MPP schedule these days, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to really find time for cooking. But, but I do try, especially now over the holidays. I made pierogies from scratch. Wow, uh, that is very impressive. Yeah, thank you. Thank Probably you. Probably very labor intensive. Uh, yes, uh, it, it was. I also made gingerbread cookies, my Slovakian grandma's recipe from scratch. And so, you know, when I do get the time, uh, I do cook. But lately, it's been it's been tough. So what is the meal that you're known for? That, that's like your signature the dish. Meal, if you ask my friends, probably they would tell you my baked salmon. My baked salmon is probably my signature dish. Uh, when I'm here in Mississauga or in Toronto for the holidays, I make one big serving of, of salmon with roasted vegetables and roasted uh, potatoes, and that's probably my signature dish. Okay. So we live in this beautiful country with four seasons. Sometimes you know, winter tends to be long. Which season is your favorite season? You know, I have to say, obviously, the summer. <laughs> I love summer, although I was born in the winter, so my birthday party is always in the winter, and, you know, uh, so... I'm not a big winter sports person, but my, my brother, he loves snowboarding. And so sometimes, you know, in the spirit of um, collegiality, I, I do join him to go skiing. But I love summer. That's why I was in Florida for a few days and I really enjoyed the sunshine and really needed that vitamin D to recharge. So what else would you like our viewer to know about you? Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know. I'm your neighbor, basically. Uh, I lived in Mississauga, Mississauga Center in my riding for the past uh, 16 years. And so I really grew up in that community. And so I'm just like you, you know, 
my family has gone through to the similar challenges uh, of you know immigrating to Canada. It's not easy, um, you know, finding yourself in a new country, um, in a new world. Frankly, I immigrated from from Europe, so it's a different continent. Everything was so different, and there is often language barriers, right, that we have to work on and learning English. English, you know, is my sixth language actually, and so, uh, you know. So I'm just like, you know, most residents of Mississauga C came from another country, worked hard. And I was just so blessed and so fortunate to get all the opportunities that were afforded to me to, you know, to, to be where I am today. And that speaks six languages. So what are those six languages? So it's actually five. five? But okay. English, I'll just give you an extra one. Thanks. <laughs> English is my sixth language because I used to speak Italian, but I don't have anyone to speak to uh, Italian in, and so so I did forget it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Italian, English, French, French Polish, and Slovakian. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. So we're going to take a quick break. So we're going to be right back with Natalia. Stay tuned. Losing weight and feeling fit is a simple three-point process. Diet, exercise, and a weight reduction supplement. VeggieSlim by Greenish is a Health Canada approved weight management formula that's effective, safe, vegetarian, and natural to use. Combined with the right diet and exercise plan, VeggieSlim will bring you back into the path of healthy living. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Natalia, MPP of Mississauga Center. Natalia, I want to talk more a little bit now about your office. So where is your office and how can people reach to you or get in touch with you if you have any ideas? So my constituency office is located at 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, uh, Unit 708. It's uh, at the intersection of Eglinton and here Ontario, and we are open. We had our Christmas uh, open house um, last month, and so anyone who uh, wishes to get in touch with me, uh, please give my office a call or an email, and uh, I have uh, quite a few um, days available now in January to meet with my constituents. I'm really glad to be back in the riding to be able to have those meetings. As, as much as I love being in Parliament, you you know, uh, my heart is in the community, and so by all means, if anyone has any issues, any problems, or simply wants to chat, uh, I'm available for, for meetings in the month of January and February. So what are the hours? So the, the office runs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, but I am also willing to take appointments outside of those hours if, you know, Is it generally have... Monday to Friday? Monday to Friday, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the key policies that you want to share with your constituency that you want to discuss that's been uh, brought to... to in recent month? So a lot has happened in, in the last six months, but uh, more recently, uh, you know, one of the things that was very important for me in Mississauga was an announcement of uh, seven new mental health beds being funded by our government at our local Trillium Health Partners Hospital. So, uh, you know, it's part of our overall strategy of, uh, you know, reduce, reducing the burden of mental health and funding, uh, you know, $1.9 billion over the next 10 years uh, for more services in mental health. And so overall in Ontario, uh, about 50 new beds were introduced across 12 hospitals. And so I was very happy that uh, our local hospital was part of that announcement. Um, other, you know, other things that we're working on is spe specifically to Mississauga or is a more robust transportation um, um, more like better transportation and so um, you know together with our minister Jeff Urich uh, we have had several meetings with uh, our colleagues with the other MPPs in Mississauga and Brampton and so we're looking uh, at uh, improving re regional transportation and so uh, I'm hoping that there will be some announcements in the new year and uh, I'm very excited to be a part of that as well. So is that, are these the key issues that the, your constituency kind of brought up and now is being addressed? So there are many, many issues yeah. uh, that come up uh, in the constituency, but health is number one. Even today, I had several phone calls, uh, you know, people telling me, sharing their healthcare journey with me. And so health, I would say, is number one issue. Transportation is easily number, number two, um, or maybe number three. Education comes up a lot as well. You know, um, educating our future generations, I think, is... Uh, something that people uh, find extremely important and so as you know uh, we have made some consultations in regards to the curricula um, over the last few months and so I'm looking forward to the announcements from our um, Minister uh, Thompson 
uh, as to you know what the results of those co consultations were and how we are moving forward on uh, on curricula, but um, you know also other issues in the classroom such as texting, having uh, mobile cell phones, things like that. So I I'm really excited for that as well. So for people that wants to get an update on the progress of those policies, where can they go? Um, so, well, everything is online these days, so um, any policies can be found on our ministry's websites. Uh, but also, uh, if you can find certain information, you know, you can contact my office and we'd be more than happy to share it with you. And I've noticed that you've also done Facebook Live with some updates. I think this is a great way of you keeping people up to date about what's going on, what's happening. So if you're not already a friend or following mm -hmm. Natalia, you should be following Natalia on Facebook because you're giving really great updates to a lot of people <laughs> about what's happening. Well, thank you. I mean, we do live in the age of social media, so if it's not on Facebook, it didn't happen kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I try to stay connected with my constituents through various means, uh, and so a lot of people are on social media, but even for those who are not, I try to, you know, uh, sometimes uh, do press releases into local newspapers, come on to shows like, uh, like yours. So thank you so much for, for giving me that opportunity. Uh, I do a bi-weekly segment on the Polish radio station. So I try to be involved as, as much as possible and accessible through various means to, you know, to update my constituents to the great things that our government has been doing. So what are the upcoming events that's happening within Mississauga Center? So um, my upcoming event is the Family Day Skate. I'm, I'm hosting it together with my colleague MPP Khalid Rashid, so I'm very excited for that. It will happen on the Sunday uh, of Family Day weekend. Uh, so it's Sunday, February 17th from 1.30 to 3.30, I believe, at the Mississauga Valley Community Center. So I invite you all to, to come out for some skatings, for some hot chocolate, and for some interesting chats. It's always fun for Family Day. Uh, any other upcoming stuff throughout the year that oh, that people can look forward to? Yes, yeah, so a very important one, which I just remembered, is our pre-budget consultations. This will be our first budget, which our Minister of Finance, Vic Fidali, will be announcing in, in April, uh, in the spring of 2019. And so right now, uh, we're in the process of hosting uh, pre-budget consultations. So anyone who has some great ideas about you know, how to save money, look for savings within uh, our budgets, but also where money should be spent and what are some priorities, what are some programs that are important important uh, to, to people of Ontario. Uh, we will be hosting some roundtable discussions and some sessions. I know my colleague has uh, already have done that. Uh, Nina Tengri, I saw on, on uh, social media that she's done hers, so kudos to her. Um, but, um, you know, um, look out on, on my website for, for the date of when my budget cons consultation will be happening and, you know, contact your local MPP offices. Uh, and submit those great ideas because we want to hear from you. What are those priorities? What are you thinking about? And uh, so that, that way we can reflect that in our, in our budget, which is coming up sooner than we, than, than we think. This is a great engagement for all the people then Ms. Saga Center, actually all of Ontario, reach out to your MPP. But for Natalia, uh, check out her website. We'll have her website at the end of the show so you'll be able to go and see what's happening, the latest update, probably information about the event for February the 17th. Anything else that you would like to share with our viewer? And that's your camera. Uh, I would like to wish all of my constituents and all of Ontarians a happy, prosperous and healthy new year. And my number one message is that I'm here to listen. I feel blessed and fortunate to have been elected as your member of provincial parliament representing Mississauga Centre. So I really want to hear from you. What are some challenges that are happening in your family? How can I help? How can I assist you or connect you with the right ministry? But also, what are your ideas? What should our government be focusing on? What are the priorities? for you and your family. What, where do you want to see us going? And so, Happy New Year. Uh, please reach out to my office and I really look forward to connecting with you. Natalia, a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. It sounds like I need to have you back again just to talk about maybe uh, what's been the progress and how things are going on. But appreciate your time, appreciate all your advice for, the, for women out there who wants to get involved, should get involved in politics. Your door is op always open for your constituency to come and provide feedback. I like the idea of the fact for the budget, for those of you who have those fabulous great ideas, let Natalia know. She will be your voice at Queen's Park so that she can share all these great ideas that you guys have. Thank you so much again for coming. I would like to thank my fashion stylist, Susie Tomasi, and her website is susiequewels.com. A portion of her proceeds goes to the Women's Shelter and my wonderful makeup artist, Mindy Baji. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Please follow me on Instagram and check out my website, nadira.ca and subscribe to TAP TV. And please stay positive and start believing.